Welcome to Talking Straight. I'm Suresh Kochatu. The question is who is supreme? Is it the Supreme Court or the Parliament of India? As per law or as per the standing of the Constitution, Parliament alone can make laws and not Supreme Court. For long, the judges of the Supreme Court and their old boys club called Collegium used to decide who would become a judge, who would get promoted, who would get demoted, who would get transferred and of course, who would be sent on a loop line posting. It was a kind of you scratch my back and I will scratch yours cozy club. There's no transparency in the selection process by the Collegium and everything remains and remained a secret. So much so that when an RTI was filed asking for the minutes of the Collegium meeting, the reply was no such minutes exist because no such selection was made in that meeting, I believe. Justice M.B. Lokur, who actually uh, retired from the Supreme Court, was one among the four judges who rebelled against the former Chief Justice Gogoi and held a press conference, as you all know. He recently questioned as to why there is so much secrecy around the Collegium decisions. One wonders why he didn't ask that he was part of the Supreme Court. I don't know. Justice Lokur now argues that citizens are entitled to know the Collegium decision on the appointment of judges. Wonderful idea. It should be done if you ask me. After having led the judiciary right roughshod over the powers of the parliament and state legislatures, the presiding officers of the two houses, that is the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha, are hitting back in style. Vice President and Rajya Sabha Chairman Jagdeep Dhankar and Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla on Wednesday came out strongly against the judicial overstep in legislative affairs, observing that just as legislators cannot pass judicial verdicts, Judges should refrain from arrogating themselves to the function of lawmaking. Addressing the 83rd conference of presiding officer, Jagdeep Dhanka, vice president, said that Keshavananda Bharati case, a judgment of 1973, which held that the parliament's powers to amend the constitution are restricted and do not extend to changing the basic structure, set a bad precedent by seeking to establish judicial supremacy. Parliamentary sovereignty and autonomy cannot be permitted to be qualified or compromised as is quintessential to the survival of democracy, said Jagdeep Dhankar. No institution can wield power or authority to neutralize the mandate of the people. It is the obligation of the Parliament of India and the legislatures across the country to protect the sovereignty of people. Vice President Dhankar made it evident that his remarks against the Supreme Court verdict in striking down the NJAC Act reflected a deeper resentment against what to consider is a judicial overreach. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla also referred to the subject briefly, saying that the judiciary should respect the sanctity of the legislative bodies. This is a serious issue and organs of the constitutional democracy must adhere to the specified roles. The constitutional body should refrain from activism and stick to their responsibility Speaker Birla pointed out. Vice President Dhankar had earlier raised judiciary's hackles by criticizing the Supreme Court's verdict, as I said before, of the National Judicial Appointments Commission, which sought to end the collegium system for appointments to higher judiciary. And on Wednesday, VP Dhankar revealed that he declined to entertain the Attorney General of India when he wanted to call on him to convey the message from a Supreme Court bench that constitutional authority should refrain from making statements on the judiciary. Vice President Dhankar to court said, I cannot be a party to the emancipate power of the legislator." Unquote. The observations made by the Vice President about the role of judiciary and also the frequent references to the Supreme Court judgment on widening the NJAC Act, which was passed by the Parliament, have been interpreted by certain quarters as a precursor to another possible effort by the government to end the exclusive say that the Apex Court has in appointments to the constitutional courts. In the past, Union Law Minister Kiran Rijiju had made similar comments on the Collegium and how the Supreme Court had judges had become a law unto themselves and the backlog of cases across the country. That was not taken too kindly by the judges of the Supreme Court. Now it looks like the government of India has changed its mode of attack and let the presiding officers of the two houses take on the judiciary. In fact, Attorney General of India R. Venkat Ramani told the Supreme Court on Friday that the Union government will adhere to the timeline, that is last Friday, to the timelines fixed by the court to process the recommendation for judicial appointments. But the government seems to be in no mood to go by the AG's commitment and timelines. In fact, the AG was rebuffed by the Vice President, as I told you earlier. The AG's stance seemed like a government statement, and it looked like a step down at that point in time from an earlier view that it was not a post office to clear the Collegium recommendation, that it would take own call, that is what the government said. The court had remarked earlier in a earlier hearing that the government seemed to be miffed 
by the striking down of the National Judicial Appointments Commission law in a judgment in October 2015 and was deliberately delaying the appointments and remaining incommunicado on collegium recommendation. The harsh words from Union Minister Kiran Rajuju about the collegium system and judicial appointment seems to have also rankled the judges. Justice Sanjay Kishan Kohl, heading a bench comprising of Justice A.S. Oka, said that the Supreme Court cannot pick and choose if the judgment is aligned with the government's views and decide on enforce it or not. Justice Kohl said that the court would enforce the law on the collegium system as it exists now. But the problem is that the parliament has passed no such law as of now. The lordships usurp that power from the parliament. The Supreme Court is of the view that the government wants to bring in a better system. Nothing prevents the legislator from doing it. But my question is, once that law is passed, will the Supreme Court strike it down again, just like they did with the NJAC? But every system has its pluses and minuses, said the judges themselves. When it comes to the collegium, the judges sitting on the high horse believe that there are no flaws at all. Justice Call himself admitted that nobody says the collegium is a perfect system, nor can a replacement be perfect at all. Oh, the lordships seem to agree on what they have is not perfect. Then why did they strike down the NJAC Act passed by the parliament? Because the lordships felt that the government would have a say in the appointment of judges. I can name two judges who warmed their way from the erstwhile Andhra Pradesh High Court and then using the influence got elevated to the Supreme Court. Most of you would know whom I am talking about. Both these judges owe their elevation to the higher echelons of judiciary thanks to their proximity to a particular political party, which once rules the erstwhile state of Andhra Pradesh. The Attorney General Venkat Ramani himself admitted that ultimately it's the people that operate this system and the issue needs to be resolved. No disputes on that. It needs to be resolved, if you ask me. He said that he will be out of the system in a year and his grave concern is that the environment is being created where meritorious people hesitate to give the consent to offers of judgeship because the government is sitting on that according to the Supreme Court judges. The issue that Justice Call felt was that the government should not be guided by political affiliations, personal philosophy and cases in which an individual had appeared as a lawyer while considering the name for judgeship. That is absolutely correct, Your Lordship. But the same accusation of favoritism can be leveled against the collegium. So the question is, who will bell the cat? At the end of the day, judges need to be judged based on their ability to reduce the backlog of cases. Performance matters and nothing else. If the excuse is that the government is not clearing the appointment of judges, then the Chief Justice of India and his fellow collegium judges should give an assurance that there will be a quid pro quo. Clear the appointment of judges and we will clear the backlog. But will the judges of the Supreme Court bite the bullet, especially the collegium? That's a question. Thank you for watching. Jai Hind. Please subscribe to Nationalist Hub English channel for more interesting videos. And don't forget to like and share this video. Nationalist Hub, it's a news revolution.